Welcome everybody. Tonight's an informational meeting on our water infrastructure improvement project for our village. You know recently we've got a 2.4 million dollar grant as part of this project as part of a 3.7 million dollar project which we've through grants help we've been able to get through our funding and ready to go so tonight is to answer your questions you know have engineering present but answer your questions and hopefully you know get everybody on a solid basis of where we're going what we're doing so I'm going to lead off the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so Trustee Nineker has been driving this for the last year and a half. Year and a half. So I'm going to turn it over to you. So briefly, the, the project is what we're going to do is replace the six inch water main on Montgomery Street between Market and roughly the Y at the hospital. Uh, there's going to be water mains off of that, so we're going to replace the water mains on Livingston, Chestnut, and Platte. The old four-inch clogged, you know, tuberculated, partially clogged water mains with a new eight-inch line and new hydrants along that. Uh, Livingston Street all the way to Beach and Chestnut Street and Platte Street all the way to Mulberry, which is a a transmission line that's in good shape that's been replaced uh, in, in recent history. Uh, the service lines will be replaced if they're, uh, what we're going to do is do new curb boxes, which is the, the key kind of thing on by the sidewalk, a new curb box. And if you have a copper line coming out of your house, then we can reconnect to the new curb box from the old one. And if you have a galvanized line, you would probably need that replaced. Uh, so, I'm going to turn this over to Troy uh, Wojciechowski, who's the engineer. Oh, and if you're not in that area, you're largely unaffected by this project. So if you live on, you know, Market Street or, you know, Violet, you're basically going to be on, largely unaffected by the project. So I'd like to turn it over to uh, Troy Wojciechowski at Stantec Engineering, who's been working on this uh, for several years now. And he's with David Hansen tonight, who's an engineer also. Thanks, Brent. Did you want me to use the microphone, or I can speak loud enough that I don't have to use this? Or? I, I think it'd be better if you did, because it works well with okay. the recording. Uh, as Brent said, uh, we're with Stantec uh, Engineers. We were contracted with the village uh, several years ago to begin an analysis of their water system, water distribution system. Uh, as you can imagine, the system in general is over 100 years old, and it's way past its useful life. Um, so the, the village aware of this um, through you know increasing water main breaks and other uh, water service issues hired Stantec to, to review their system um, which we did several years ago. Um, based on that that analysis that we performed we identified a phase, the phase one improvements which uh, uh, Brandt went through. Um, as you can see on the map on the screen, uh, the yellow lines are the, the water mains that we're planning on replacing as part of this phase one project. Um, Brant mentioned that right now there's a six inch main that runs up Montgomery Street, which is, is undersized as it is. And once I show you uh, some photos of the conditions of these water mains, it's even further compromised. So we're replacing that six inch with a 12 inch water main. Um, and then the, the three side streets that are highlighted in yellow, as Grant um, outlined, uh, you have Livingston from, from um, Montgomery out to Beach, and you have Chestnut um, extending to, to Mulberry, and then you have Platt that also extends to, to Mulberry. So these streets were identified as the most critical to replace in, in phase one. Over time, there's going to be other phases because you can imagine the whole rest of the village system is. Most of it is over 100 years old. Um, yeah, you can go to the next, next slide. Okay. Um, so, so the why part, we kind of discussed that. The system is 100 years old or more. It's past its useful life. 
Um, so what that causes is this capacity and fire flow issues and pressure issues as well. You can see uh, the water, pictures of the water mains that were um, cut out as uh, part of a repair of a break. And you can see what is called tuberculation um, within the main. So you can see a very small diameter that actually passes the water. So you can see from those photos, it's obvious that this project has to move forward. Um, what's been done so far, as I mentioned, Stantec performed a village-wide system analysis. And then we identified the phase one component, um, which were the most critical uh, components of the water system to replace. Uh, next, uh, over the, the last two years, we worked with the village to obtain funding um, through the state. And we were successful the beginning of this year securing a $2.2 million grant, uh, as well as additional low interest um, loan funding. Um, so what first, I uh, just went through the streets that we have uh, proposed as part of this project. And where are we now? Uh, the project is up to bid as of today. Uh, the, the construction plans are on that table and uh, the bid documents went out today. So contractors will be uh, reviewing the documents and preparing their bids over the next month or so. And June 5th, they'll be submitting their pricing uh, to the village. So we expect construction to begin uh, around July 1st or so. Usually takes about a month for all the paperwork to get in order and the contractor to get mobilized. And what we're anticipating is for construction uh, to begin July and push probably into the spring of, of next year. Um, what we're anticipating and how we have the, the contract set up, we're hopeful that most of the work along Montgomery Street gets completed this year and the side streets will probably push into next year. You know, that's our plan. It all depends on you know, various um, different things that can happen, weather or things like that. Um, but that's, that's what we're expecting. Um, okay, what else to expect during construction? There'll likely be lane closures on Montgomery Street during the construction. Um, because the water main will be installed within. Um, the water main will be, for the most part, installed within the street. So there will be um, lane closures during most of the construction. Um, you know, we are. Excuse me. Um, we have worked with the village, though, to identify you know the key festivals and fairs and things like that. So we have within the, the contract documents that the contractor will have to keep um, all lanes open during those key periods of time, particularly for the fair, because um, that's obviously a critical, critical time to have fully operational streets. Um, there'll be minor short durations of uh, instances of no water during final connections, but it really should be limited for the most part. The new main is installed. Um, tested and disinfected, and then connections start to be made. Um, so during switchover and, and connections, so there will be short durations without water, but, but very limited, very limited. Um, as far as connection of individual water services, Brand kind of touched on this. I'll just kind of outline that again. Uh, the village water department has been going around um, to all users within the project area over the last few months or so to help identify what type of services um, go to each house and to each commercial establishment. Um, in general, the, the current standard is for copper, copper service lines from the street to your house. Um, again, because the village is older, some houses still have older original service lines, which are typically galvanized uh, metal. So the village did their best uh, through interviews with uh, residents and just their records of uh, trying to identify which homes and which businesses had um, copper and which had the galvanized metal. Uh, the way the contract is set up, the, um, the contractor for this work out in the street will make connections to the new curb boxes uh, out at the street if it is a, a copper line. If it's an old galvanized metal service, it won't be connected, and that service will have to be uh, replaced. 
with a copper line. So you can go to the next slide. And the reason for that, these are two examples of galvanized um, service lines, and you can see how corroded they are. So it's, uh, it's a very difficult task and, and sometimes actually impossible to connect that galvanized line to the new um, curb valve. Um, so the, the final decision and the final basically verification of what type of line might go to your home will be made during the construction process. Um, you know, as I said, the village tried their best through interviews and through the records to identify copper or galvanized, but in some instances, you know, it, it might not be um, spot on. So the contractor will be charged with excavating to see what type of, of uh, service line material you're, you might have. So I think that's all I have. Is Dave, you didn't ban this? No. So we kind of wanted to keep it short, just be here to answer any questions that you might have and any information. Sure. Do you have a sign in the thing or just? Just take it open. Just open it. There's a small enough group here today that I think you just, you yeah. can do it by show of hand. And sure, sure. Unless Pat needs it for records. I need it for the records. So then introduce yourself, please, before you talk. Uh, Andrew Hunter, 16 Livingston Street. It's an old house. Um, I assume that the upgrade has galvanized. So, connection? We did wire, we sent a, a letter out that everyone is affected in the service area, and they attempted to try to uh, go into the basement and look at what the pipe is coming into your water meter. Has that happened with you yet, or? Well, did, did you? Uh, no. no. Uh, okay. That I know of, I'm not always there. But uh, some years ago, uh, as part of uh, part of perhaps the sewer sewer line, uh, I, I remember the water line was moved. So what what appears in the basement may not necessarily be a, at the junction from the from the new main. That's yeah. what we're, yeah, that's yeah. what could be uncovered in this too, is that you may have copper in your basement and then it may be a fitting in the middle of your lawn and it goes back to the old galvanized and we still have to upgrade everything. And if that's the case, I'd pay for it, is that right? Yes. The rate? Approximate rate. So, as a practical matter, you know, we think that the contractor is going to have all their equipment mobilized out there and they may, you know, have these approach the owner who needs it done and you know kind of have a volume pricing we're not sure how that's going to play out because the village can't have any any kind of role with the uh, contractor that does the work but it's a practical matter they may offer to do your replace your service line it might be a better value for them to do it than for you to go out and do it yourself we're just not sure yet but but you're, certain, you're, you're not obligated to use the contractor right. that's performing the work for the village. No, I'm just yeah. concerned about yeah. and, it, uh, uh, it, it can, it's, it's really going to, it'll really vary based on the length of it, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the surface conditions above it, you know, is there a lot of landscaping and retaining walls, um, sidewalks, obviously hard feature, you know, it can really vary. But you should give me your name. A, a few thousand is probably the average, yeah, it's probably, but yeah. it's, it's very speculative. You should leave your contact info with me, and then we'll come out and look at it. I have one other question. This doesn't involve the sewer line, does it? Correct. This is the water service. I'm going to be closer to the village. I'm Cynthia Pinnell. I live on Montgomery Street, but on the west side of the street. And I didn't read the information enough to know that my side of the street isn't involved at this point. But I'm assuming that you will be doing the west side? You should be involved in that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. The services will be replaced on both sides of the street. The oh, water okay. main. Yeah. I thought it was just the yellow portion of the map. Which yeah, that's, that's the water main itself in the street. So and then hypothetically, because I know that I have galvanized pipe and nobody ever asked me but I, I know that's the case. Would it make sense for me to have that line replaced now from my house to the street so that when the line comes in, it will be ready? 
potentially, but the risk with that is the same uh, issue in reverse, where your contractor that you would hire would not be able to reconnect at the right-of-way line at this time. Okay, so so you, you might want to reach out to somebody, get a pr get pricing. If you know, if you're very confident that you have galvanized, you know, you might want to set, make that arrangement with them, kind of prearrange it and get your costs established. But ideally, I think it would best suit everyone to wait until the new curb box is there. So when they run the new pipe, they can just make a good connection and it's, it's smooth okay, sailing. Well, I misunderstood that. I heard you to say that they will be running the new pipe and if you don't have copper, you won't be connected. Yeah, so they'll be running it to the right away boundary, to the property boundary. So they'll tap the main and the street. Right, but they'll run a new service line. They'll run a new service line. From the original one, you said you would not be connected. So that would, would that mean you will not have water? Yes, so Dave, I don't understand why would they not why would they not be able to replace their existing service line now and then when the work is done, the con the contractor that's doing the main could automatically make the hookup. Only the, the possibility of her plumbing contractor not being able to make the connection either. So if they if they undertake it now and it's galvanized in the street, mm -hmm. when her plumbing contractor goes to try to connect uh, from it. The it be, out, from the curb box out from the curb box out and now in the pillow out. space. So um, you know, they, they could replace it all the way to the water main, but that's really costly. You, you don't want to do that. You don't want to pay for that. That's ultimately going to be done as part of this project. Yeah, we're going to the curb box. You know, so th there will be a new service line. There will be a valve at the property boundary. Yeah, I know where that is. Yeah. So, so but my question is, if I don't have that line in place, then I will have a period of time no, when I have no, no, no so water? The whole so line is going to be live. The, the existing water system and the new water system are going to be both oh, live okay. for a, a good period of time because Right. The contractor's going to come in, they're, yeah, they're going to install the new 12 inch main, um, they're, they're, then they're going to start doing services, it's going to take them time to do all the services. Could, could you just, Donna Warner, the street, could you just back up and explain, like, what's the curb box? <laughs> you know, is that the thing? I mean, just, I mean, you know, you have a pipe coming out of your house and it goes to some connection. Is that the curb box? Yes. There's, so, everybody has a curb in box. This, in the street, we'll have a 12 inch diameter pipe, large diameter. It's going to be ductile iron, water main. Okay. Um, they take a brass, they call it a corporation valve, and they, you know, they tap the water main and they thread it and then they yep. thread the corporation valve in. That can turn on and off, but they'll turn it on and it just gets left on. And they'll run the copper line all the way to the right of way boundary, and there will be another brass valve there. What's that called? The curb, curb box. The that's curb box. That's the curb okay. valve in your curb box, yeah. The box yeah, is just the below, ground or below, ground. below ground, below ground, five foot below ground. How is it marked? Um, it's it's usually like a round disc, you know, with sort of two holes and it has a special wrench that that's you That's what we looked at, we yeah, when I was at your house. Blue water. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. You know, sometimes they're, they get buried and lost. Um, sometimes, you know, they're really old ones that might, might, might have been a different style, but that's, that's the very typical style. Um, Lindy Ryan, I live in 21 Platt. Um, how is this, and I know that the responsibility from the box to our house is not your responsibility, but does anybody know how this is going to affect the sidewalk? Our water line right on top is a big tree. So, I mean, here we are, and next door to me they have a stone wall. So this is going to be disrupting to a lot of people's homes. True. I certainly will be. Um, you know, it's the contractor's responsibility to put it back to the same condition or better as it was originally. Um, obviously, the trees, that, they're a challenge, and a lot of them have grown over time, you know, with old service lines. I, you know, what can happen there is the contractor, when they go and they scope it out, potentially, you know, if you had to replace anyways back to your house, or even if you didn't, um, you know, they could adjust that, the location of that, and sort of snake in the connection around the tree or the obstacle um, you know they generally that can that could be worked out okay. so yeah. Dave, the, the placement of the new curb box if there's a condition as just described can can an arrangement be made so that when a new curb box is put in it's it's better suited for the customer versus running it to some on certain yeah. random place yeah. so I mean, how is how, would, how is that communication going to be established so that residences can, you know, effective, do a more efficient and effective way of connecting 
based on placement of the new curb box. Right. Um, you know, obviously there'll be some time to notice that they're working on the street. They're going to be installing the main first. Uh, but, you know, we can have discussions with the contractor and ask them to uh, pre-notify the, you know, the, the residents on the street to, you know, say, hey, you know, next week we're going to start water services. If you have an alternate location that you would want to be considered, uh, you know, please let us know. And then we can kind of, ahead of time, work that out. Can you let people um, know about how fast the rate is in terms of the process? And we've discussed this in some of our meetings about what the process is for opening up the trench, putting in a new, covering the trench, and then leaving it and so forth and about how many feet per day? Uh, water main will vary based on what's in the street and what they have to dig around. As far as the service lines go, you know, it depends on how many crews they have going. They could have, you know, two or three crews all doing service lines at the same time. They might get two services done a day, three well, services. I'm more talking about the main the itself. Main how itself. long will the main? How long will somebody's property be disrupted while they're running the main down through the street? You know, originally, on an we, average, yeah, we had estimated 22 weeks for a construction duration. But we were talking 60, possibly 60 to 80 feet a day. Right. Probably. Right. 60 yeah. to 80 feet a day that will be opened up, new pipeline installed, and closed. Right, so you don't have an open trench or an open condition that's dangerous. While then, and so it's a it's a repetitive process going down the street. Is that am I correct in that? Yeah, yeah certainly. And, and it might yes. be better or it might be worse, just depending. Yeah, on what but the on an average, yeah. you can expect them to go down a street at 60 feet a day, and as that be opened up and closed, as they're approaching your house, you know, you can be prepared. So that's less than one house. Yes. 60 feet is about one lot, small lot. Yes. And I think we should do a mailing for an affected area so we we can do a partial mailing for the people. You know, if, if you're on that block, it's going to be affected for the next three weeks. I, we'll send some kind of notice. Yeah, or we'll physically should, sign, show up at the door. And we'll include some you know, mechanism to communicate such changes as a change in uh, the curve box. You know, we'll have to give that some thought, how we communicate back and forth with the resident and their their uh, contractor and what he's thinking as far as the, the new roof. Because I understand their concern. It's a timing issue for them. Sure. And, sure. It's a, and it's an expense. So they need to understand that timing sequence of when they need to prepare to do, if they have to do a new service line, when they need to do it. And, and a lot of that we will not know. We, you know. we have set this up with a milestone for the completion of Montgomery. So we're fairly confident that a contractor is going to come in and start doing Montgomery first. Um, how many crews they want to put towards the project, whether they want to do work on all three, four streets at the same time, we don't know. Um, and, and also, if they do start on the street, we're not sure which end they'll start on and working from. But one thing we will know is that they will complete water main construction on the entire street, and they'll have to test and disinfect it before they're going to then make service connections. So you'll, you'll, know, you'll know either if you're on one end or the other, whether that water main has been installed completely, and you know we'll have that communication with the contractor to pre-notify everyone. Hi. Right. Um, I actually wrote a long letter. I'm not going to go through it all. I've made copies. I can give it to you. I'm actually coming at um, Piper Woods, and I manage um, 6422 Montgomery Street and 6423 Montgomery Street, uh, both commercial buildings. So, copies for you guys. Thank you, Piper. Um, and. Um, I'm just going to go through, I have a lot of concerns, like uh, I've talked to people since like February about this, kind of got like um, conflicting information, so I'm super psyched that you guys are here tonight giving some like real, like, I mean it was all real information before, but like some more up to date information. Um, you know, I'm, so my commercial buildings, it's about 36,000 square feet right of businesses in the village of Rhinebeck. Um, I didn't really hear about this until someone went into like one of my tenant spaces, uh, one of the restaurants. I'm just going to sit because I'm really tired. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and uh, basically, like, you know, that's how I found out about this. So I think, like, you know, get, really getting out down on the street and like talking to the actual businesses that are going to be affected from it. Because even though if you're not like going to be like connected right into the street, you know, um, you're still going to be affected by traffic flow, by like everything else. Even if even people on Market Street or everywhere else, we're all going to be affected by this. Um, 
So I know like for my property, basically the uh, 6423 Montgomery Street and Foster's and a few other places, I've heard through the grapevine that we're all connected and my I know my property is connected on Garden Street. Garden Street yeah. So I'm just wondering like if there's no connections like along Montgomery Street, like say like Foster's, like I don't know, maybe to Delamater, I don't really know where anybody north of me connects to, how fast you'll be able to get through. Because the biggest concern that I have, you know, is obviously connections and things like that as well. But that traffic flow, um, customers getting to the building, people wanting to shop in Rhinebeck because, you know, this is going on. Those are things that I'm interested in. I want to know basically um, what the traffic flow is going to be, like with how the police department is going to be like working this out, I, I don't, or whoever. Um, you know, I'm interested in dust and noise. Are the contractors required to be like wetting down basically any dust? It's pouring rain all the time now, but we all know come July, August, September, it's gonna be 100 degrees and dust everywhere. Um, outdoor dining, we have restaurants that have outdoor dining. Obviously, these are the things that I'm kind of interested in knowing about. Um, if I missed a few minutes in the beginning, I apologize, Brant. Um, you know, just got a lot of things going on. Um, so traffic flow, dust, noise, you know, obviously you're gonna be using some sort of machine to like break open the pipe, I assume. Vibration, um, what are the specific hours you're gonna be working on? You know, is this gonna be, you know, eight to eight? Is this gonna be at night, which is what Mayor Bassett had originally told me that it was all gonna occur at night. Um, my understanding it's probably not gonna occur at night because that would be a huge expense, um, especially on a DOT road. Um, so those kinds, of, so hours, um, and I need to know like, I mean, the earlier we know, the better I can kind of prepare, you know, my tenants for, I know one of them is here right now, you know, so that's great. Um, and um, so traffic flow, emer how emergency vehicles are gonna get in, how are pedestrians gonna be able to cross the street. Um, I'm interested in knowing parking, um, when you guys trench down Montgomery Street um, on the west side, I guess it is, uh, we're gonna lose a lot of parking you know, along that street if it's from NDH all the way to Beekman Arms. So I would love to ask like, the board if during this like, process if you'd be willing to like, open up or override the Livingston Street like, permit parking during this project so that people can basically park. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that they park like in front of your driveway. I'm just suggesting, you know, during most days, uh, you know, between the hours of nine to five, which is there's a big chunk of people, you know, who work in the village, um, Livingston Street for the most part, for, for the most part, is pretty open, you know. So um, I'm hoping that you guys will consider that as, as an option. Um, and then I'm also interested in obviously safety, you know, the trenches, the liability of it. Obviously, I assume that's all going to be covered by the contractor. Um, but, um, you know, and in the evenings, you know, when there's maybe not as much light. Um, I don't know. So sort of obviously, things. it's going to be intrusive that in that segment from, you know, until we get past the Delamater. I mean, it's, it's not a magic trick. We, we do have to tear up the road, but no, I understand. Do you want to answer some of her questions? Or? There's a lot to answer there. <laughs> no, I think in, in, in general, I think all your concerns are legitimate, and I, you know, it's for a project like this, going through you know Main Street of a dense village, uh, especially commercial businesses, you know, those are all legitimate concerns. But built into the um, the contract documents are a lot of provisions for. Um, you know, for the contractor having to maintain safe access to businesses, to, you know, residential properties, um, you know, things like that. And there's, there's also going to be, um, it's going to be put upon us to, to work with the contractor kind of on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, look at you're not providing enough access here. You really need to, you know, pull this back here. You know, you, you're done working here. You, you should have this open now. Um, you know, so it's going to be a little day to day. Uh, we're going to have full time inspectors on the on the project. Um, you know, so there's going to be, and, and I think the village, if they don't have it set up yet, will have um, not really a hotline, but kind of a, you know, 
who to contact with, with specific issues as the construction is going on, and, and it's going to be up to us to address those issues as best we can. And in some cases, it's going to be a matter of kind of like Grant said, well, it's a bit of an inconvenience. We're going to try to minimize it for you, but you know, this is something that we have to do. I totally, I not to cut you off, I, I totally get that. You know, I've built two buildings. You know, I've done a lot of projects of time, and I totally appreciate the fact that it's an improvement and stuff like that. I just want, um, you know, some more specific information, which is great. Um, it would be really awesome if the village uh, could create some kind of link. You know, so people could basically just go to the website and get like maybe daily updates or like, hey, like we're we're shooting down Livingston Street, you know, between 33 and 8 or something like that today. Or I mean, because it would be pretty in the, this day and age, it's pretty easy to, you know, type off a quick text or whatever and link it to something. And I think that would be like super helpful for like people to be able to just have one specific link. I mean, I could tell my tenants like, hey, this is what's going on, you know, check out this, you know, just would be like really helpful. Um, for, the, um, for the most part, again, I think it's helpful for the sidewalks on the west side, really on the east side as well, that the water mains going in the, in the street. So I think we anticipate, based on our, our traffic control plan, that yes, um, the on-street parking is going to be lost for a good duration of the project. But the sidewalks aren't going to really be impacted until we start putting in the service connections to the to the buildings. So for the most part, I think the sidewalks are going to be sure. are going to remain open, and it's going to be the contractors. Um, the resident sidewalks, you mean? I'm sorry. Do you, are there a significant amount of sidewalks in the commercial district that are going to be impacted? No, not not at all. Okay. Um, not at all. The other building that I have is 6422 Montgomery Street. The connection is at Garden Street. It's not Garden Street. Livingston Street is my understanding. Um, but I, I did put it, I had talked with, is it Brian, Alex? Um, I talked to them back in, I think, February or March. And I asked, you know, if he could come out and kind of tell me where this curb valve was. Um, he came out, unfortunately he was not able to because at the time there was still like a giant snowbank on Livingston Street so he couldn't, you know, find it. Because um, I'm kind of still waiting to get some kind of confirmation that, you know, we're good to go, I guess, with like copper lines and that sort of thing. I, he, so, 6422 Montgomery Street, it's on the corner of Livingston. Uh, well, it's more than a restaurant. It's, it's a it's the whole building, but but yeah, the access, the water comes in basically through the basement right. of Gigi's. So Brian was down there, or did somebody look down there? Um, I I mean I know that like the water department like went access like the basement. You know when you, they were going like door to door is my understanding. This was right. like some time ago. I mean uh, when I call talked with him in February March. He said he wasn't able to like really see anything because there was a giant pile of snow on the outside. Yeah, yeah and I, I'm that's as far as I've gotten. So we can I mean, show you what we have surveyed. Okay. Um, and some letter information we have, and there's some. There is a six-inch line out in front that we're unsure of exactly where it heads. Um, that you are, or are you? We are unsure of. It okay. has to be essentially excavated, reconnected, and and verified. There's also a service line at the rear of that building on Livingston almost all the way to the end of the lot. It looks like there was an old garage there, potentially. Originally, yeah, my dad had a, a Chevy dealership and right. ran the entire like, length. I mean, the building so at, was like, you know, at the driveway that runs in behind that property, okay. but before it, um, at the garage, there appears to be a curb box that, that serves that. So I'm not sure if that only serves that portion of the building or the rest, but we can certainly talk specifics about you know, your property. Yeah, I would, I would like that. And there's gonna be some instances where we just can't figure it out based on our records and our eyeballs right now, and we can't tear up the street now. So in some instances, it's going to be discovered during the time of construction when the contractor's out there and, and starting to dig. And like the previous person asked whatever, I mean, I know I have copper, copper lines like in the building and down in the basement, but I, they, it's an older, you know, it's in 1930s, like, or, you know, we renovated it, but it's 1930s original. So there's possibility that the, the curb valve could be galvanized? Could be, could be a, a mid-stream connection. They may have only replaced it at the time to where they had to. Uh -huh. And you know, so they may not have gone all the way to the property boundary. Um, okay. You know, depending on what the, the problem was at the time. So the, there's also potential for 
there would be a galvanized line in the basement and it's already coppered out at the street, in which case, <clears throat> you know, at the time of installation, we'll just make the connection. We will direct them to do that. Okay. And be able to change our, our um, contract, so. What what is if um, if there's any sidewalk damage or landscaping or anything? I mean, you said basically the valves are mostly in the street, whatever. So there sh shouldn't be any issues with sidewalk or landscaping. There, there will be some sides, you know, for service valves. Yes. You know, they may have to pull a panel or two of sidewalk. Um, you know, they obviously have to dig five feet down where that valve is and enough to, to make that connection. So there will be some sidewalks to be replaced, but it's all part of the it's part of part their of the contract. Yeah, it's their, part okay. of their responsibility. So. So it's important to note that that curb box is in the right of way. Yes. Right. So everybody's curb box will be the new curb box will be put in the right of way, which is you know from the road to whatever distance it is. Yeah. It varies based on the street in this case. Okay. Just to follow up on Pepper's comments, <coughs> contractor parking. Where, where do you think the work? Do you have a staging area for the work crews or? We're actually um, coordinating with, um, with John Fenton on that. Um, I think there was two potential uh, private property owners that were going to be looking at for a staging area for contractors and construction materials. So we're, we're hoping to flesh that out uh, before bids are in. Um, so within the next week or two, we'll probably make a final and if nothing is arranged before, you know, beforehand by prearranged by the village, it will be the contractor's responsibility to find a suitable location and enter into a private arrangement, you know, without landowner. Yeah, all we're doing is trying to provide. Yeah, some some, some convenient places yeah. for it. Right. Because yeah. obviously, the further away staging of materials is, the more difficult it is to get. You, know, you have several thousand feet of pipe you have to bring in in twenty foot lengths along the way and other materials, obviously all the excavated material, the, the new backfill material, so it's it's a lot of back and forth in and, and, and area, certainly. And I think it's also safe to say we're not going to know all the answers until we get a contractor. So right. it's very true. And, and we line up a contractor and work out a detailed plan and a schedule based with that contractor, correct? That's right. That's correct. I was going to ask who is responsible for doing the more detailed timeline, like month one, week one, you know, and where you're going to be. So is it you or the village or the contractor? The contractor is going to be responsible for preparing the schedule. Um, once they're contracted, a uh, detailed schedule that will continually be updated and revised okay. through the whole construction project. On Livingston Street, for example, you know, because you mentioned parking there, you know, there, Livingston Street has parking on it all the way to Mulberry six days a week because of the meetings that are going on in the Livingston Street Church for one, but residents and other things. So it's not, you know, so there's a lot of displacement that needs to occur um, in, in a lot of, in a number of locations, <laughs> never mind Ruggie's, <laughs> but, you know, so. Um, so that would be helpful. I'm uh, not one of the affected customers, but I had asked Brant because I don't quite understand the relationship uh, to, for example, be, I live on Beach Street, right in front of where that pipe ends, I think. I don't know if it's in the middle of Beach or wherever. So how are any of the houses that may be directly, you know, I'm 20 feet from wherever your connection, your end point is. How does that, how do I, how do you know where you're actually, what am I connected to? <laughs> and will I be impacted, you know, or anybody, say, on Mulberry, where it ends, or, you know. There are four corners. Street to street, obviously, there's several, you know, people the beach, the uh, crosses, North Parsonage, Mulberry, and then Beach, and maybe another one as well, the Center Street in the middle. Um, and it varies on each of those cross streets as to whether or not we think they're fed from the cross street or from Livingston. So you don't know? We, we have surveyed and we have several identified and we do have some records. The village uh, water, you know, Brian had records that did say or confirm uh, you know, that, that you were fed from Beach Street or you were fed from Livingston. So, so shouldn't I be concerned about this project? Yeah, I mean, um, no, you should still be concerned, certainly. I mean, there's, you know, there's going to be a construction operation directly adjacent to your home. I have an 1860 house, so who knows what kind of pipe is in the ground. Um, sure. So, I mean, I, I just want to know if I have to be prudent and concerned about my connection. 
I think at this point, we don't anticipate any um, disruption of your service either. We've identified that your service comes off of the main um, further down or somewhere else. So at this, you know, sure there's gonna be a couple surprises for sure when you're doing work in a village of this age. But at this point, you know, you shouldn't be affected. As well, well, no, hey, Troy, but it's possible because yeah. we're going to be making the connection yeah. of Livingston to the beach. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't it seem logical that at some point you're going to shut off that beach to make that connection? So there, there will be a disruption. There, there is a, a couple locations where we'll have to shut water down. We did our best, and we actually incorporated insertion valves, which is a live... Um, it's a, a live construction of a valve on the line that you could then close it. So it's basically putting a valve in the line without turning it off. So that is our that is our goal is to minimize the disruptions on the ends, um, you know, there. So we have insertion valves specified for the contractor to install. They are, you know, we, we're still dealing with old water mains, and insertion valve might not work. We might end up having to cut and and, and, and turn off the water for a period of time. But it's, well, well, that's not really the yeah. issue. It's if you, if there's truly an increase in water pressure, who's affected, and you know, do, do we need to be concerned about those things too? I don't want you know, to suddenly find that an old pipe in the ground is actually busted. <laughs> you wouldn't expect. You should be several feet away if you're connected off of off of beach. It should be dozens. You know, tens, right. twenty feet away from the actual work area because the work is happening out in the in the middle of the intersection, essentially, and it's, it's just a cut and connection in the middle to the water main. And it's between from me to you. Right. That's that far. So sure. that, that's all. I just think everybody who's anywhere near this should educate themselves. <laughs> uh, Liz Mazzarella. Our interests and concerns are uh, kind of threefold. Um, one, we reside at 19 Chestnut Street, so our home obviously is in the line of fire. <laughs> um, and it's an 1890s home. Um, we have done a lot of renovation, but we, we, uh, we didn't have someone come out from the water department either to uh, give us any sense well, of that. We did, do, we did do a mailing, and then mm -hmm. they went door to door. Sorry, you okay. the What's your address? 19 We had a list of about 20 people that still hadn't been audited, so. So that's. Um, Not too late. One. Number two. <laughs> number two, um, I'll let Piper um, handle this, but my husband has an office um, in one of Piper's buildings on Montgomery Street, so that's a concern. Um, and. Number three, which is really at the bottom of the list, it's more purely a social event. Um, I help organize a music festival in the village every fall, and it Porch happens Fest. right in that area. <laughs> yes, Porch Fest. We actually have that specified in our documents. It's on your list. Yeah. Yeah. So, so my concern, or my questions are, is it even feasible to hold such an event when thousands of pedestrians are going to be on the streets when mm -hmm. this is going on? Um, safety issues, of course. Um, I, I guess that's the real question. Um, it, uh, you know, well, it's we not even parking. parking. We've identified and pointed out specifically to the contractor, and we've told them that all pedestrian accommodations have to be in place in advance of that event. So. So all the sidewalks will have to be restored to a walkable condition. You know, there's, there can be no pits open or excavation, you know, rough terrain, anything like that. You know, for and that. Do they work on weekends? Will this be going on during the weekend? Uh, you know, the village has the um, ability to you know, say yes or no to that. I mean, it, there's, a, there's a timeline stipulated for the contractor to complete it in, and it's a double-edged sword. Obviously, you want them to complete it as soon as possible, um, which the contractor might say, we would like a dispensation for work hours so that we can do that and work 10 hours a day instead of eight. Um, <clears throat> or you can tell them, no, you're working eight hours a day. Um, I think we mirrored the village law with regard to work hours. Um, I don't remember what that is specifically off of hand, but we, we looked it up and told them that. How did you go to say also Just so happens. <laughs> <laughs> But as I understand it, you're not going to be this summer on Chestnut. They, they could. They could. 
they said spring. Montgomery by November. They are substantially complete. So the water main in the ground, tested, disinfected, service connections, you know, the curb boxes are installed and connected as many as they can. Um, and, and the roadway has to be restored to, a, you know, there's a permit that they have to secure with DOT and DOT is going to dictate to them the restoration conditions of the street and, um, you know, what happens when basically you get towards winter weather. So. It has to be a plowable street. It has to be has to be ready to go through winter, and that's that. So that will be like their utmost priority. Let's put it that way. But if a contractor comes in and they want to put three or four crews out here all at the same time, um, they could potentially do the work much faster. Uh, or if they have just one or two crews, they you know they may only start with Montgomery, get that in place, and then move to another street. We can't really dictate that to them. That's means and methods, and that's up to the contractor. Um, but, you know, and we won't know that until they, they tell us, basically, and they give us their schedule. You know, it's my first point. It's really important that we have communication, sure. you know, constant communication. Right. No, uh, we completely agree, and we're going to stress that at, at the bid meeting for your meeting. Hi, I'm uh, Kimba Baker. I'm a 50 Livingston and 52 and 54 Livingston. Um, question, if you have like a, a property that has more than one meter, um, are you bringing, is, does like one connection come in and then there's a, a meter from that or are those all separate connections? Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense and that's certainly, it can be either way. Um, I, you know, generally from the municipality's perspective, they would like to see two separate service lines. You know, if it's if it's serving two separate buildings, if you're just metering and in, sub-metering inside, um, you can say it's a two-family or a three-family or something like that. Um, there might be flexibility. I mean, that would be up to the water department as to their preference or what their uh, requirements are established. I'm not sure <coughs> what, is, uh, what the traditional approach has been. We'll have to check with the water department on that and find out. But if if there's one service line now. Um, you know, we would anticipate only replacing that one service line and not, not changing that, you know, not installing two and making you put in another one. I, I don't think that would be necessary. Somebody, somebody may have already asked this, but like some of the sidewalks are um, historical and did, did you cover this at all? I mean, yeah. like the blue stone and if they're going to be picking those up, are they going to be putting them back down? Um, yeah, in the correct fashion. Uh, we plan to discuss this. I wonder what they're going to do in front of Betty's. There's a meeting where contractors come to sort of walk the site, and we get to iterate the points of importance to them. And all, all of these points are going to be iterated. Is, is it possible? Um, I know you want to look at the meters in everybody's home. Is it, do you, would you want people to, do you still want to inspect every home? Yes. Yeah, okay. You yeah. should give me your um, your name and number afterwards. Okay. There's again, there's only less than twenty of them that we haven't seen yet. So maybe you're one of them. Okay. Hit me? Okay. So, uh, Cynthia, sorry, Cynthia Keller, Five Plot Avenue. It's my husband Michelle Keller. He lives there too. Um, so, is there a plan with the village to um, to manage the diversion of traffic, taking shortcuts down Platte and Mulberry while Montgomery Street is under construction because I'm a walker, dog walker, um, and definitely traffic can get a little bit, you know, people who are just trying to get from point A to point B quickly through the small, you know, residential streets. So that's a concern. Yes, I mean, right now we don't have any specific provisions, um, signage, things like that to prevent that from occurring. People um, might do that anyway. Well, they will. Yeah, they're going to do that. Yeah, and, and, there, and traffic will always be maintained with at least one lane on, on Montgomery. I mean, certainly they're going to have to stop at each end of the work zone and do it. Um, you know, the work zone is not going to extend the full length of Montgomery either. You know, obviously, it'll be maybe a block or, or less on a, on a regular basis and, and it's going to move as they complete the work. So, you know, it may only be a, a week where, 
you know, the, the traffic impact was really occurring at one street versus another. Um, and, you know, and obviously that'll adjust over time. So it's, but it's certainly an issue. I mean, I, you know, I guess it will be a police department matter as well. Um, I got here at 7 o'clock, which I thought was when the meeting started, and, and so I missed the entire introduction. Can you tell me when does this start? <laughs> sure. It's, we're, we're thinking it's going to start about July 1st. This year. This year, and extend uh, into the spring of next year. Okay. The, the, and it's out. It's, else in the introduction that I missed? Well, it's out for bid as of today, so the contractors have a month to review the plans and submit their pricing on June 5th to the village. And then we review all the contractors' pricing uh, after the 5th. And then soon thereafter, the, the village will make a decision and award the, the contract to the, to the correct bidder. So next few weeks after that, all the insurance and paperwork gets into place. And then uh, we anticipate a start right around the beginning of July. And how will I know if I need to replace my line? <laughs> so you, we sent letters out to all the people affected and been knocking on doors. If you have, if they haven't come to inspect your water meter in the basement, you should leave your name and number with us. My water meter's outside. Oh, you have an external one, like in a pit. Uh, that's a meter. The reader's on the outside where your actual meter. Yeah. The, I don't know. I thought the meter was outside. No, that's the reader. That's what they read. The oh. actual meter is downstairs in the basement. Okay, so, so when can I expect somebody to come and talk to me about that? As Brand mentioned, leave us your name and we'll get in touch with the library department and get that scheduled for you. Good, because I, I'm going to be traveling for about a month and so I, I'd like sure. to do Sure, absolutely. Yeah, so as a homeowner, your name? Brock Pinell, you know, son of 22 Chestnut. Just to be clear, because I, I also I was saying it's the wrong building. What, somebody comes in audits, and either our pipes can attach to the new system or they can't. And if they can't, we have to buy a new pipe and install it? Yeah. Okay. And by what date? And if we don't, we just won't have water anymore, so we have to. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, it's not an optional. Right. Thing is like you have to have a new pipe in before you the connected pipe is in. It's like electricity. Is that how it goes? The new water main gets installed and will be charged and and serving um, people connected to it. But at the same time, the, the main that's there now will still be live as well. So there's going to be a, a period of time where the new main is operational, the old main is operational, to make sure that there's enough time for residents to. And what is the process? Literally, we're digging up the lawn and putting a new pipe underneath the house or something? Yes. Okay. So, it's a, is it a, any ballpark on what the cost is? Yeah. <laughs> so, we can start budgeting? I don't just, is it a project. really big project or is it a minor project? Um, it's a big um, project. It's relative to everyone, but uh, it depends on how far apart, what the distance is, um, you know, what's at the, what's at the surface. You know, is there retaining walls and sidewalks and landscaping? Is there trees or other obstacles? You know, those things obviously elevate the cost. Um, if it's fairly straightforward and lawn and only 20 feet, you know, it's going to be a lot cheaper than it will be if it's 100 feet and there's a lot of surface features. Um, it could be it could be a wide range of costs. You know, a few hundred hours to a, a several thousand. Um, but that's. It's, you know, it's between. It's it, it's a private contract, so we, it's hard to estimate. Um, I know that we have done projects like this in the past. Some very savvy contractors do try to employ some trenchless technologies, where they can, you know, basically pull a cable through the existing service line and kind of blow it out and pull a new pipe with it. Um, but whether anyone locally is going to undertake that sort of um, approach, we're not sure. Uh, but you might be able to find a plumber that's willing to try that sort of thing, which could be much less disruptive and potentially less expensive. Or you may have a copper line and you're okay. Yeah, or that too, yeah. We may dig it up and, and even regardless of what's showing in your basement, you might dig it up and say, actually, it's connectable. So they'll just make the connection. 
And the audit is going to determine that. That's why you're doing these tap tap well, audits. That's the yeah. best, best information that we're trying to put together now. One, for the contractor to price his, his price uh, as, as accurately as possible. But um, as I said previously, we're not going to know for sure until the contractor gets out there and actually exposes your service line because it's like, like we've been discussing tonight, there's so many variables. You might have copper inside, and you think there's copper going out to the street, and it's going to be connectable. But then, you know, your copper went from your house halfway through your front yard, and then switched over to galvanized, which isn't connectable. You know, so we're doing our best to try to figure this out now as best we can. But there's going to be some instances we thought yours was galvanized, but but you lucked out, and it's copper, and the other way around as well. Uh, technically, does Livingston Street take feed off uh, market? Is that how the flow runs? And if so, are they both 12 inch? It's a network of piping, and so the flow will be based on demand. Um, you know, so it can be fed from multiple different directions. Are these Livingston are 12 foot? The main and Livingston is 12 inches. No, it's only 4 inches. 4 inches. Four inches. The 12 inches in Montgomery. Montgomery. Yeah, it will be. There's a, there's, a, there's a 12 inch that runs north and south, or well, there will be a 12 inch that runs north and south on Montgomery. There is currently a 10 inch that runs north and south on Mulberry. So there is a large diameter main that's that's basically a transmission main, um, you know, along Mulberry Street to the fairgrounds. And that was installed, our understanding is, you know, like mid 70s. And it's in fairly decent condition from some you know photos we've seen of it where it was cored or you know. so that the, the contractor will move along the top of the road on yep. the apex, cut a trench, drop in and put the line to the curb as it goes. Yes, yeah. They may some contractors decide to put the lines in the service lines in as they go, but majority of the time they do not because when they pressure test the water main, they don't want to have any potential air pockets or leaks that, that compromise that test process. So they generally put the, the, the ductile line and water main in first, pressure test it, make sure it's not leaking <coughs> anywhere, disinfect it, you know, they'll flush it out, they'll disinfect it with you know, sodium hypochlorite, chlorine, and then they'll flush it out, then they'll test it, two tests uh, 24 hours apart to make sure it's bacteriologically safe. And then the, the health department will write a letter of substantial completion and the health department will accept it as being ready for public potable use, and then they can then they can start making their service connections, and they will just live tap the water main as they go. They they wet tap it, so the water main is on. Anybody served off of it, they can wet tap it and start putting in services house to house. You had a question. Um, what you doing at you know in Chestnut? Um, I didn't realize that you were stopping at Mulberry. I'm past that. So do you anticipate? The rest of Chestnut to have this work done. No, next not time. beyond Mulberry. So, and the houses at the corner are hit or miss. Some are served. I think they're probably served off of Mulberry. Um, so I don't know even that your service lines will be impacted. Um, there obviously will be work adjacent or nearby, so you'll have that disruption, but not service line work at this time. At this time. saying an estimated 3.7 million for this project and that's Total. just phase one Total. and we received a grant for 2.2 2. so the 1.5 where's that coming from low interest loans okay. we get again from the um, EFC they we get their AAA rate for which is awesome because we might save a percentage point uh, if it's a 20 30 year bond and we can manage that under our current rate structure without having a rate increase. Um, secondly, just thinking of this while we're having this conversation, um, has there been any thought put into, um, and I don't know how this works engineering wise, <laughs> um, putting the electrical, while we're digging up these streets, mm -hmm. putting electric underground so we can take down these poles and stop destroying these beautiful trees in the village? 
So I, mean, I, can answer, I would like to answer that for you because I actually ran a committee in, I think, 2016. Uh, we spent a year long studying that, working with the utility company, and determined if we could do a multifaceted project for electric and water while we're trenching it up. And as a result of that study, the short answer is, and we have a booklet downstairs which we can dig up and share you, was the answer is no. Um, it will, the only savings as a result would be disruption. It would not save anything in terms of cost at the same time. So because of the multiple trenches, multiple different things that going on at the same time, um, we looked at all ways to try to make this happen at the same time in 2016. And it was like another four to five million dollars to do the electric on top of doing the water at the same time. You can't put them in the same trench. Well, I understand. They have to, they have to be, yeah. That, but I <coughs> so it turns possibly. into two projects. Yeah. <laughs> it turns into two projects, basically. We definitely considered that and, did, and spent a year studying it. Is it possible um, in order to sort of be sensitive to our gardens, um, could we independently dig up our, our border lines before you get there? So they're exposed, do you know what I'm saying? You, like, I guess the question would be, are your gardens out in the public right of way? Or are they interior to your own property? Well, you're, you're so saying that you're going to have to um, go right to the house, so. No, the, the village contractor is only going to work to the property line itself. And then, what, and then we're responsible. Then you're responsible for, for going back, yeah. Okay, so we have to do that anyways. Exactly. If you have a galvanized service line. If you have a galvanized service line. But we don't tell them to do that. Yeah. No, I mean, but we can get. We a, have a we, best. We guess. have an inkling if we can look at your water meter. So, okay. so let's say your inkling is that it's galvanized. Then what does the homeowner do? So the, the water meter will be installed. The new service line will be installed with a valve at the at the property boundary, the right-of-way boundary, and then you will hire a contractor to come and replace the line from your house out to that point and make the connection. Are you going to have a list of recommended people? That's this type of thing? Is it going to be any plumber? Or? Any, any plumber that's in the business, I mean, we don't intend to recommend, we wouldn't want to recommend um, anyone just, you know, because obviously uh, performance can vary and we wouldn't want to be. No, I mean, sometimes they give out three or four um, sure. people who are experienced with putting in, you know, lines from the house to the street. Right. Yeah, yeah. Any, any licensed plumber should. Any, any licensed plumber can do it, there's several in the area, but the village itself as a municipality cannot make that recommendation. But there's people that there's people locally that do that. But you said you could also use the con contractors that are doing the whole project. Well, they That's what I'm trying to do. Oh, yeah, we have that one. They will want to do that work on Saturday or something, or you know, they they might be one. Yeah, five or six at a time. Yeah, you know, but what you know. They're not obligated. They're not responsible. Don't let you know. Don't, certainly, I would hope they wouldn't say this, but I, w I would hope they wouldn't tell you that you have to hire them because you do not. No, no. Um, but you know, you, you can, like if they are willing to do it, they want to do it. Say they're in the course of the work and they said, "Hey, let's you know make an arrangement right now. We'll just keep going." They could do that. Um, from the village's perspective, you know, there's there is a timeline to the project, and we don't necessarily encourage them doing all of the service work. Um, because we don't want to, you know, delay the timeline for the rest of the project either, you know. So it's it's a little bit hit or miss. But didn't you say earlier, don't do it in advance, though? No. I, 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 I don't think it's you. a good idea to do it in advance. Should we get my shovel out tomorrow? <laughs> because my our concern is that if you do it in, in advance, you may have the same problem that we would expect the contractor to have, and you may not be able to make the connection. So what happens with these galvanized lines? You expose it, you cut it, and you go to make the connection and it crumbles. And then you have to move a foot back and it crumbles. And then you move a foot back and it crumbles. And when, you're, when, the, when it's the village's contractor, now when they're doing this work at the right away to begin with, now they're encroaching on private property. And that's, you know, that's not good legally. It's they're working outside of the right away boundary. They're on your private property. That's why we can't have them try to make that connection. The, the problem could happen in reverse for you, where you're now going to have to start working your way into the street until you can make it, get a connection made temporarily, because ultimately the contractor is going to come back and put the water line into the right of way and, and make the connection to your new service. Thing. 
So if you wanted to undertake it now, it's, it's possible, but I would think that whoever you try to employ to do it is going to tell you it's not a great idea because there's a risk associated with trying to make the connection to what is potentially a, a corroded line. But, but they could get, I'm sorry, but they could get an idea of how much it would cost. Sure, you could, you could ask the contractor to come out and give you an estimate. Certainly, and we would encourage that. If you know you have a line that's going to have to be replaced, you know, start calling people now, have them come and look at it, get an estimate in place, let them know it's coming. Um, obviously, as the schedule, once the contract is awarded or selected and they give us a schedule, we can give, start giving you a better idea of when that may occur. Um, but, you know, those pre-arrangements could be valuable, certainly. Um, I think communication with this is going to be super important I have, because there are going to be lots of houses involved and I have visions of us all talking to the same four contractors just, trying to say and bulldozer coming down your street and you're not ready. It's um, very, very Yeah, and that's my fear that... Uh, yeah, they, they, uh, you know, a good contractor can potentially get two or three services a day. Um, we're talking, uh, you know, around 130 customers total, a good majority of which are going to be connected. So you're not talking a lot of a lot of people that have to actually do the replacement all the way into the home. You know, maybe 20 or, or 30, hopefully less. But. I have a practical yeah, question, absolutely. Deb Alexander, 74 Livingston Street, um, regarding the increase in the water pressure. My house is 1890s. We've done some restoration. Some pipes have been replaced. But I still have these pipes in there behind the plaster and lath. And I have a view, vision of this new coming through and these joints going all through the house. How much is the pressure going to increase? Is there any risk to 1890 houses? We don't expect the pressure to increase. Um, you're, you're increasing the capacity of the pipeline. You're giving yourself, by doing this project, more fire flow, so you'll get greater flow out of your hydrants. Oh. But regardless of whether the, the mains in their current condition are smaller diameter or it's larger diameter, the pressure is essentially the same. Um, obviously, if you try to flow from a hydrant now with smaller diameter main, your pressure might drop way down. Uh, but as far as there being higher pressures, it's not anticipated because... Okay. And the pressure is also regulated. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure as part of the meter installations that the village requires a, a pressure or regulating you valve. You might have a pressure reducing valve, reducing valve yeah. in your basement. You might have a re pressure valve in your basement. Well, sure. I'm sorry, I might have to put one in. I mean, I have adequate, I I have have adequate pressure have now, is what I'm saying. My pressure is adequate. You I just envisioned it. Okay. Okay. Um, so you had said a while back, and I want to make sure I just have your back straight, um, 60 to 80 feet, like, you know, in, in a section, and then you said something about 22 weeks. Is 22 weeks for Montgomery Street, or is 22 weeks for the whole kit and caboodle? 22 weeks was total. Total, okay. Uh, but, um, you know, obviously with the timing of the bid process and starting in July, um, they're going to run into winter weather, and it's it's... The, the substantial and final completion have been pushed out into Feb, you know, March and April of next year. So they, they, they may be able to do very limited work over the winter, if any at all. They might have to just stabilize it. And so you think that um, Montgomery Street is going to be the first run, and do you think that it'll yeah. start at the beach? Yeah. So contractually, contractually we, start, we state in there that they have to complete Montgomery Street substantially by November, okay. mid-November. So certainly they're going to take on Montgomery Street first okay. and, and tackle um, it and first. And then you think that, that hypothetically, whatever, it will then go to one of the other the side streets, whatever, in, in next, next spring. So like reasonably, like Livingston Street might not even get started until, you know, um, in, until March of 2020. It's, it's hard to know, yeah, again, yeah, contractor by contractor. Yeah, yeah I, I, would, I would expect that they will start the side streets as well okay. as soon as possible. Okay. Certainly with the water main work, um, you know, it could be a scenario where they put the main in and then they can't get to the services until next March um, or something along those lines. It's hard to know. Um, 
we have to see what the progress is on Montgomery. I mean, if Montgomery turns out to be exceptionally challenging, they may not be able to put any resources towards side streets and may not be able to start any of them till later on. It's, it's just very dynamic. Okay. Um, um, you talked a little bit about the hours, like per day, like that contractually, it's like X amount of hours per day that they work or some, something like that. There's, yeah, there's no contractual requirement. Um, okay. There's interstate you know, laws that require them to work eight hours a day or they have to file for a dispensation of hours with the Labor Department. Um, we noted in the contract documents, you know, I think we mirrored the village's local law on working hours, you know, for um, any other operations. That? I'm, I'm just trying to get engaged. Like, if someone starts at, like, 8 o'clock in the morning and they I work, you know. I have to look that up. It's in the, um, the performance you? standards in the beginning of the zoning I was chapter. trying to like, like hypothetically like if they work basically daytime hours then they're not working nighttime hours and reasonably like the trench could be like covered over so that when the restaurants like open for dinner uh, you know, I would expect and sometimes this varies depending on the contractor if the contractor is a union yeah. uh, contractor they will have a very set eight hour schedule um, if they're non-union they could maybe work ten hours a day they might choose to uh, but I would, generally speaking, it's seven to five is what they ideally would like to see. Uh, but again, it's going to vary by every contractor. Um, when do you think we'll have, like, do you think by, um, uh, you said the bids come back June 5th or something like that, and then the work starts July 1st, Trevor? Do you think that some point in, like, June, those sort of timelines will be in place to be able to They, they certainly have flexibility to change things as they go, depending on what you know what they feel they need to do. Uh, but obviously, with just ongoing discussions with the village and and us, um, you know, but they will they will uh, have to give us a schedule, schedule in that time they start. Yeah, so they'll you know when when they're given award, they'll they'll start executing their contracts, bonds, insurance, mm -hmm. permits. They have to file for the DOT permit. That's going to take a few weeks. Uh, they'll start sending us shop drawings for review. So we're going to look at the materials. Review them. That's there's some time frame that, that goes with that. Then they're going to order the materials. It's going to take them four or five weeks to get all the water main to come in, you know, all the piping to come and be delivered to the to the area, um, that sort of thing. And, and you know, in that time frame is when they generally develop the schedule. We have a pre-construction meeting with them. We go over all of these points. So I'm sorry, Robert. Like, um, and just what you're saying, whatever is it feasible that they actually won't actually start like. Digging into like August or, or thereafter? No, I, I think they'll want to start digging as soon as possible. The, the water main itself is not a long lead item. It's something they can generally get their hands on in a few weeks. Okay. It's just a matter of the, the the contract execution, the legalities of it, the permitting of it, uh, uh, which you know you have to have a contractor selected before you can finalize the permitting and stuff. Um, has the town? I'm sure that there is on the list as well events, whatever. Um, the fair itself is a pretty, it, it, um, because of the traffic flow, people, whatever, it's pretty, um, for business-wise, like, pretty dead for, like, the summer, you know, because everyone's going to the fair. Any thought on, like, just working on through fair, you know, or, or no? To, like, divert people, like, around, you know? No. I'm just just throw it out there. Good. We, really we put a block out date for the fair. Yeah, right? yeah, that was one of the events. And the sheep and wool and, and yes, all of we put all of our events on the on the schedule. Could I just ask? Is there a? I'm assuming there's a uh, RFP, whatever you call it, that's public. Is there a bidders conference? Yes. When when is and that would be open to the public? Of course, it would have to be. May 22nd. Yeah. I'm assuming. It's probably going to be in the, it's, it's going to be in this room, right? So, yeah. yeah. I'm assuming there could be a lot of people here. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my other couple quick question. Can you just remind me what, what side of the streets you're going down? As far as the actual new water being where Yeah, yeah. No, well, on, like on Livingston, are you on the north side or the south side? North. North? You know? I don't know. Oh, oh you don't know. North side. Okay. I believe it's on the south, southbound lane on Montgomery. Uh, generally speaking, it's the opposite of where the existing water main is now. <laughs> yeah. There wasn't a lot of other utilities. Yeah, we're not replacing it in the same exact spot. So if 
you know, if the existing is in the east lane, you know, the east side of the road, we're going okay. to be on the other side because we want to be away from the the older water main okay. trench on the new one. Okay, then don't listen to me because that's where the existing water okay. is. Okay. So we were told it was going to, I was told it was going where the existing We can look at the plans. I, I just don't remember on a street by street basis exactly. Oh, no, the existing is on the The plans side. are right here. You could actually look at it. The south side. I can just add the plans will be list, they'll be in my office for anybody to look at them during the business hours. This meeting is going to be on Panda, so if anybody has, is not here tonight, they'll have seen That's it. Great. So, is there a link? Or I, I, I honestly don't know how to access like Panda. I'm embarrassed to say. Yes, like, it's, on our, it's on our homepage, and it's also if you go to YouTube, it's on YouTube as well. So there'll be some sort of like links or. <laughs> They can go to the link, whatever. Okay. It takes, it's, it's how many days until it's up? It's usually on YouTube first within a couple of days. Panda gets it on YouTube first, and then it's within a couple of days after that. So within usually four days, it's on our website. Okay. Did you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Troy, can we make. Um, have copies of your charts too that you showed tonight so that they were the ones that they can come and sure. if you weren't here early enough and you missed the introduction that was all discussed you can please come back and pick up some charts we'll make copies of them and have them available in the, in the clerk's office so you can at least start that and I think the comment on communication was fantastic uh, we need to figure out how to do you know on time real time communication so people have access to this Chairman, can I ask you, uh, can the village anticipate a fair number of contractors that will bid? Oh, yeah, I think this is going to be a, uh, it's an attractive project. Yeah, project. I, I mean, it has some challenges associated with it, certainly, but um, it's, it's a, a good amount of work for sure. Good. That's our one. Yes. <laughs> I just one question to the village. I'm wondering, like, with all this going on, you know, and obviously it's a huge project and the businesses will be greatly impacted, and the residents, you know, everyone will be impacted, traffic flow, what have you, people getting to the, our lovely, beautiful uh, village. And I'm wondering if the village and or the town, how, you know, who obviously is not here, but uh, the village has basically any kind of budget to be, uh, I, I don't know, to... Um, do some kind of promotion to encourage people to come to the village because I am concerned that once this like traffic, you know, kind of gets impacted, people will drive around town and shop online. You know, I mean, I'm, that's a concern. And at the end of the day, the business district and the residents are the ones who pay the taxes, and I am worried about it financially. So that's my question Good to. Question. I don't have, we don't have an answer to that. Okay. Any other questions? I may have answered this. Um, we uh, obviously, uh, apparently are not impacted by this. Can you your name, please, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Tim Noon, 59 Chestnut. Uh, I, I came in and I heard you uh, say that we're, we have, those of us who are east of uh, Mulberry are on a different line, is that correct, on Chestnut? Yeah. You're, okay. you're, you're just beyond the work area, the work limits. Okay, but it, it is, is, it's served by a, a separate main, or? Well, there's a, there's a water main in the street. They're all interconnected. Okay. Um, but it's, you know, you're beyond the, the limits of the new water main replacement, which requires the service lines. Understood. And uh, obviously, you, you will have a, a eye to the future of, of, uh, of replacing those not affected and, and any improvements on that line would uh, obviously uh, utilize something that perhaps would make it easier to con continue the work that, um, phase two. And it will be phase two, three, four, or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing lasts forever. Let's, uh, let's so. We did a, an analysis of like most of the distribution lines and we have like a, a phase, this is phase one and then we have phase two phase, yeah, we have other phases. I don't know where your, what phase your line falls in. And, and that, that was, phases was based on budgetary concerns I assume and also, uh, you know, uh, what, what is considered. Uh, it was
was mostly just a condition. I see. Yeah. So those, the phase one uh, uh, lines are considered more um, in danger or need more uh, uh, priority-wise because of the condition, perceived condition anyway. Yeah. We have critical facilities at the north of the end of, of the line with the hospital and the fairgrounds. And so the benefit of the 12-inch line is a redundant transmission main. You always want to do your transmission work first sure. so that you, you have your central artery of flow and then you kind of start branching off of that. So. Yeah, it's not a perceived condition. It's an observed condition. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. Yes, thanks. Okay, having heard any other questions, no other questions, we'll make as much information available as we can uh, to the public. Uh, please feel free to stop and look at the plans that will be in Pat's office, in the clerk's office. If you have any questions and want to read, read those, you're more than welcome to look at that. And we'll make the charts that the uh, engineers showed earlier also available for you. Thank you all for coming. And uh, also leave your name and number if you want someone to come and look at your your service line in the hall. Oh, okay.